Welcome to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about Fedora 23 and usability of the operating system in comparison to um, Windows and to some extent uh, Mac OS. Um, lately actually I've been experimenting with the Mac OS but uh, when I consider all three of the operating systems the one that I usually go to the most is Fedora 23. And I know most of you are going to say, why not use Ubuntu? Um, I actually teach college courses, and I hear that all the time from my students. Um, for me, personally, I prefer Fedora. I've been using um, Red Hat distributions, Red Hat, CentOS, Fedora, um, ever since, uh, honestly, Red Hat came out. So I'm used to the distribution is it easier than Ubuntu? No. Um, if you want to get up and running quickly, you're probably going to find Ubuntu more easy. Case in point, uh, just getting the screen capture software set up and having the ability to have an in-screen uh, window of my camcorder was actually quite an undertaking. But all things being equal, um, I have to say that everything that I need straight out of the gate is here in Fedora. I have done quite a few customizations to my desktop, um, such as the toolbar, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But um, what I like is that straight out of the gate, you have all the go-to things, apps that you need. One being Firefox, um, I actually installed Chrome later, command line access, um, I have virtual boxes here, so I have my Windows virtual box if I actually need it, um, my other favorites, um, LibreOffice, uh, I always used OpenOffice, so uh, it's not too far of a stretch from OpenOffice. Uh, I have DOSBox installed so I can play some older games, uh, VLC for media playback, and a couple of other tools. But if you look at the software that's available, there's actually just a ton of tools that you can use, uh, install, different things that you might find enjoyable. Um, some that I've recently installed, some that I'm experimenting with. Some are uh, all open source, such as Rhythm, Rhythmbox. Others, like Overdrive, uh, is, of course, is something that you have to pay for. I've found that Overdrive works really well if you want to sync with uh, Google Drive in Fedora 23. Um, I did have VMware Player working, but when I upgraded the kernel, uh, I started to have problems with it, so I'm going to have to work on recompiling the kernel, or not the kernel, I'm sorry, but recompiling VMware Player uh, so I can get it working with my current kernel version. Much of the time you have to wait until there is another release uh, of VMware Player to get full compatibility with the version of Linux that you're on. There's plenty of utilities. A couple that I actually installed was the Tweak tool, which I'd like to show you. Uh, I wanted to make changes to the default appearance of Fedora 23, and to do that I installed some themes using the Tweak tool. And the Tweak tool is available right from the command line, so if you want to use DNF, uh, you can install the tweak tool easily. Um, I can make changes on the network. I could add new extensions, and I did a couple of different things. I wanted to see the battery percentage up here. Um, I wanted a different looking alt tab. Uh, so I installed that. Uh, Dash to Dock was an awesome tool. I really like this one, this particular extension, I should say. Dash to Dock lets you change the way your dock looks. Normally, it's hidden, and it only comes up when you move your mouse over or you hit the so-called Windows key. 
Um, you can change the icon size in the dock. Uh, let's see, what else did I change? Uh, position, I put it on the left. Um, you can show favorite apps. You can decide whether or not running apps will show up in the dock. Um, what else did I change? Appearance, you can shrink it. If I turn off uh, the shrink the dash feature, you can see the dot gets much larger. And then now we've got a scrolling effect to see all, oops, sorry about that, to see all our apps. Um, so I leave shrink the dash on. Everything fits much, much nicer. We've got opacity we can change so that we can make the background of the dock lighter or darker. All kinds of awesome stuff. Um, fonts, pretty typical. One of the problems that I had with this particular um, system that I'm using is that it has a high DPI screen. And overall, um, GNOME does a pretty good job in version 3 of supporting high definition interfaces, um, but you can change the scaling, which increases the size of the text, which is really nice. And what's going to happen? How many workspaces do we have, or is it dynamic? And I set mine to be dynamic. So all in all, it's very useful uh, using the tweak tool. Another tool that I installed that you may want to consider grabbing is, if I can find it here, Fetty. Um, Fetty has quite a few different tweaks that you can use. Uh, you can install Google Chrome here. Uh, you can have a plugin for Hangouts if you use Hangouts. Uh, through Google. A couple other things that I put in um, the Microsoft TrueType core fonts. Um, Mozilla Firefox was already installed. Multimedia codecs. So these are all things that um, aren't necessarily included. Well, they aren't included with Fedora except for Firefox. And they're things that you would have to add. Um, some of my family members use uh, Skype, so I added that. I added Steam, but I'm having problems with Steam displaying correctly, mainly because I have the high DPI screen, so I've got to figure that out. Some different theme engines and other software and tools, and of course tweaks. Um, we can get better font rendering, and overall I have to say with Fedora 23, the font rendering is amazing. Um, couple other things I did. I set SE Linux for permissive. I know, absolutely scandalous that I would do that, but uh, given that it's my workstation, there was enough that irritated me that I decided to make that change. Uh, now that I'm running on an SSD, I'm on actual hardware, my Lenovo 2 Yoga Pro, I wanted to use the I.O. scheduler uh, for the SSD to hopefully get a little bit better performance. Uh, other tools that I use, really mostly I'm using Firefox. Um, I use Libre as needed and I have my media playback. Um, so overall that's it. I mean honestly everything that I need, everything that I want is here and it's easily available. It wasn't a chore to install Fedora. This machine also is a dual boot machine, so it's actually booting into Windows 10 or uh, Fedora. By default, of course, I have it set to boot into Fedora, which works best for me. Um, if I need Windows 10, I do some uh, training for Office 2013, so Either I'll launch it from my virtual machine here with VirtualBox, or I'll use uh, um, my Windows 10 actual partition. My 
virtual machines are inaccessible right now because they're actually on a USB 3 drive. Uh, the SSD in this is 256 gigabytes in the system, so I actually store my VMs on that USB 3. I have a tiny little 128 gigabyte uh, thumb drive that is beautiful and very easy to keep in the computer and use. Right now I have it in a Macintosh that I'm using as well, so it's not in here at this moment, but uh, normally I would have it in and I can create virtual box VMs and do anything I need to do on the virtual machines uh, if I don't want to disturb uh, my primary operating system here. So that's an overview of Fedora 23 and what I'm doing with it. Um, I'm sure that there's others who use different operating systems and they have preferences that they use and I completely understand that and I'm not saying Fedora 23 is the best by any stretch of the imagination but I'm not saying it's the worst either. <clears throat> um, I really like that all the software that I have on here is free, most of it's open source and I don't really have to concern myself with licensing issues so um, plus it's just for me, it's a challenge to learn what I need to know and to get things working in Linux. I really do enjoy that, most of all. And I will be coming back in future videos. I'll have more information about Fedora uh, and the different applications I use and some more specific information for each app. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think about the video with comments. That'd be great, even if they're... Uh, constructive criticism. Um, I'm not saying I know everything about Linux, but I do definitely enjoy the operating system, and we'll be talking more in my videos. So thank you, and hope to see you next video.